And I just want to thank Sophie for this opportunity uh, to be here to speak to all of you. Uh, we're here to celebrate this book, uh, Canada 150. And the one thing about, as other people have mentioned, and, and, the, and the people in this room, is that we are a multicultural nation. And we have the freedom to speak. Before I came here, what was I reflecting on? I was thinking of the friends and the people that I know in other countries that don't have this opportunity. And the article that, I, uh, that I'm going to uh, read to you is, well, the initial article is death, the taboo topic, because there are a couple of things that are dear to my heart that I, I believe that we need to talk about them more openly. Things like mental health, and death, because I truly believe that the more we know, the better we do. So this is my article. I lived and loved to the maximum by Chris Toda. When my mom started gesturing, I started paying attention to this nonverbal communication so as not to miss any clues. When someone is dying and unable to speak, we see how important nonverbal language can be. My mom was an introverted person. My dad was the opposite. My dad didn't want to be alone when he died. He wasn't. He was surrounded by family. A passage in Final Gifts mentioned that introverted people may choose to die when no one is around. I intuitively knew my mom's time was near. The window was open. I spoke to her and told her that we were all leaving her alone. We had said our goodbyes. Five minutes later, I asked my husband, Michael, to go and see mom. She had passed away. This is the way my mom chose to go, privately for her dignity. I truly believe this was her final gift to me. What I explained was that during my grieving process, I found joy, humor, and comfort. It's strange to hear some words from someone who had lost their mum with whom this bond was immeasurable. Yet my time at the hospice, I did laugh, that gut-wrenching gut laugh, and I saw my mum's humour to the very end of her life. I felt the comfort and love of family and the hospice family up until my mum's final breath. This is what I had learned while I was at the Laurel Place Hospice. In that short period of time, I learned more about life than I can explain in an article. And while at the hospice, I found joy, I cherished every second, and I lived and loved to the maximum.